Good afternoon. I'm Katie Talavera, your moderator. Uh, our next speaker is Adam Carnow. He has 25 years of experience. Um, Adam is a community evangelist. He's a keynote speaker, thought leader, and technology evangelist. Adam will be presenting on the topic of communicating the value of GIS in your organization, how to measure return on investments. Uh, before we begin, I have a few reminders. Uh, if you have any questions during the session, please place them in the chat box and we can address those at the end. Uh, for continuing education credits, uh, please make sure your Zoom login is your full name so you can get credit for those. Um, and this recorded presentation can be found on the conference website um, after the event. Thank you, and um, Adam, I hand this over to you. Great, thanks very much, Katie. Thanks everybody for taking time out of your busy day and uh, your conference to visit me in this session. I'm gonna turn my camera off so we can focus on the slides. Um, all right, so we are here for communicating the value of GIS in your organization, how to measure return on investment. So let's talk about why are we here? Um, I'm sure that you're very busy at work and you could use additional resources, of course, like more budget, more staff, more infrastructure, training, events, or even more time. Well, in order to get those things, you've got to convince the people that control the resources in your organization to invest them in you and your GIS program. And so the bottom line is that value equals success. You know, if you want to be successful and gain access to additional resources, you've got to produce value for the organization. And you've got to communicate that success so that people are aware of your impact. So really what we want to think about success and being successful with enterprise GIS and organization, it has to be recognized value. Because if you're providing value and nobody knows about it or knows how much of value you're providing, then you're not going to get those resources. So there's two phases here. We've got to first create, concentrate, and strategically create value. And then we've got to measure that value. And then we have to publicize that value so that you can be recognized for the value you're contributing to the organization to be successful and therefore get more resources. So when it comes to annual budgeting time, you know, those are the people that control that process are asking every single department, what have you done for me lately? You know, it's a competition for resources. So communication of your value to those that control the budget is critical as they try to figure out how to allocate those limited resources. You know, they've got to justify their budgeting decisions. So you've got to communicate clear metrics and vivid success stories. You can't just say, oh, here we are. Look at all the great things we're doing. You need to have some numbers and clear metrics. And this, you've got to have good stories about your successes. So there are new, numerous other reasons why um, you need to measure and share your value. Uh, number one is stimulate the expansion of GIS. You know, we all know that GIS provides benefits. So therefore, the more people using it, the more benefits that are realized by your organization and the more value you're bringing. So you should always be focusing on expanding GIS in your organization. And then you also want to celebrate your success. When you are successful, you want to celebrate it and publicize and be, be acknowledged for it. Uh, and let people know, uh, you know, how well you're doing. We need it to reinforce the need for investment. Again, to go back, you know, this is critical just year round, not just during the budget preparation process. People need to constantly be reminded of the value you're providing to the organization. And then lastly, to provide accountability. You work a job for a reason, you have roles and responsibilities. You need to make sure that you're accountable for those and that you can prove it uh, in the organization. So what does this look like when, if you're actus, actually practicing uh, measuring your value and publicizing? Well, let's, let me introduce you to some of the planning and development services of Kenton County, Kentucky GIS team. From left, you've got Ryan Kent, a principal GIS data analyst. In the middle is Lewis Hill, senior geospatial data analyst. And to the right is Trisha Brush, the GIS director. And they're one of the most innovative, progressive, award-winning GIS teams in the local government industry, and they have a really great story. Back in 2008, during the recession, their county was really hit hard with the, with the deficit and the recession. And one day, Trisha got a call from her supervisor during the budgeting process that due to the county deficit, she had to prepare a presentation for the planning commission to justify their budget. They were being considered for complete elimination from the budget, so they were going to cut GIS. 
So <clears throat> Trisha prepared her presentation and saved her team, but that was her wake up call. Since then, she has completely reinvented the group to make sure that never happens again. So let's see how she's done that. Now, she's done this through a comprehensive strategy that includes multiple different facets. Number one, measuring or having metrics or KPIs, key performance indicators. Number two, branding so that people know who they are. Marketing their work and their, their brand. Social media, very active on social media. Communications, other things, articles, blog posts, etc. Giving presentations at conferences. Uh, getting certifications. So her staff are getting GISP and AICP because they're in planning certifications. Now these are key because they validate your knowledge as part of a professional community and they show your colleagues that you actually know what you're talking about because you've got some letters after your name that the community has bestowed upon you. She's won lots of awards. Uh, they also give back to the community via volunteering. Now these initiatives are designed to really raise their visibility so that everybody knows who they are and what their contributions are. And their scope goes beyond GIS. She has multiple staff that are active in Toastmasters International, which is a club focused on communication, public speaking and leadership. And one of their emergency management staff was asked to serve on the board of directors for the local emergency planning committee. So Trisha focuses on mentoring and turning her staff into well-rounded superstars that give back to the community. And this just adds to their visibility. So this is their publicly accessible website, linkgis.org, where you can explore their applications, shop for maps and data, and contact the staff. Now it also features a series of articles that highlight their work. So after they complete a project, they actually write an article and post it up here about that. And they show the impact they're making on the organization and the community. And you can see they branded them, themselves as LinkGIS. This helps set them apart and provide a recognizable identity. They got a logo and everything. So as Blink GIS, they're one of the nation's pioneering GIS systems. They serve three different counties in Northern Kentucky, Kenton, Campbell, and Pendleton. Now they have another website called the NKY Map Lab, and that's used to highlight how they use GIS to support the county's planning process because they actually work in the Planning Development Services Division. And also how they facilitate better understanding by the public and the elected leaders. In 2016, they won the Kentucky chapter of the American Planning Association, or APA, Outstanding Use of Innovative Technology Award for this website and this initiative. They have other similar initiatives, such as the NKY Drone Lab and NKY Dev Lab. That same year they won that award in 2016, the county's comprehensive plan called Direction 2030 won a national award of excellence from APA, the American Planning Association. The Direction 30 website is a digital interactive experience to communicate their comprehensive plan. You know, most organizations publish their comprehensive plan as huge documents distributed in PDF format. This one is very engaging and it contains interactive web maps that are powered by ArcGIS that can be updated as the plan is implemented. And then for each project highlighted on their NKY map, You guys not been hearing me? My goodness. Um, all right. Well, I don't know how I got muted. Um, all right. Well, I'll, I'll keep going here. So um, they pr produce these really good looking maps. Um, hang on. Okay. And um, they don't just do maps. They also, for each project, do uh, story maps. So they also produce a story map, interactive web map for each of their labs projects. So I'm sure you're wondering, why is this such a big deal? They make nice maps, they make story maps. The difference here is the impact of these. They focus on vivid storytelling and local geographic context. They help engage the audience in new ways and they're making a difference. For instance, this story map was used by the city of Erlanger to demonstrate the need for the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet to make immediate improvements to the road. And after publication and presentation of the map and story map, within a matter of weeks, they were awarded $1.8 million to fund the project. So really powerful um, example of providing value to the organization. So check out this quote from the mayor. Now that's a great example of providing value and gaining executive support. 
It's also an important lesson that your GIS-based solution you provide doesn't have to be overly sophisticated and complex, involving lots of spatial analysis and custom coding. The power of a well-constructed map and story map that conveys critical information can really be a game changer. So here's another example where one of their projects led to a significant return. They put this story map together for the city of Fort Mitchell. Again, the city was seeking funding for a road project. And one of the city's busiest intersections experienced this frequent congestion and has been identified as one of the Cincinnati metro area's high priority transportation projects. The project's primary deliverable was this story map that served as a single point of reference for city officials, citizens, and the business owners. The story map documented traffic congestion conditions, existing land use conditions, future land use plans and demographics, and included interactive maps, a summary of businesses operating in the area, and video interviews detailing the impacts of traffic on the area, especially to businesses. The effort was successful, and the city got $250,000 from the state because of the story map and the work that they did. So here's another great quote, and this one from Fort Mitchell's mayor after they were able to get that amount of money. So here they're doing amazing work, story maps, uh, large format, hard copy maps, focused on key initiatives of the organizations they work with. They're working directly with executives who are feeling the results of their success. And they also have a marketing plan and a budget that includes giveaways to help spread their brand and their message. This includes calendars, buttons, USB drives, et cetera. Now I've not seen this before. Uh, again, this is driven by their branding. So she's, Trisha is constantly trying to push their brand and their visibility to make sure everybody knows who they are so they don't get their budget cut. They also have a social media strategy that includes an RSS newsfeed, Facebook page, two Twitter accounts, and the staff are very active on LinkedIn. And then Trisha and her staff share their stories and presentations at numerous events, including ESRI events like our user conference, our GIS managers open summit, and our geo design summit. And they've received many different awards, including an ESRI special achievement in GIS or SAG award in 2017. Now awards are great ways to show your colleagues your value from the external community. They're a great way to get notoriety internally. They validate the value of your work and they show that it's appreciated by the community. They also make the leaders of your organization look good. So everybody likes to fill the trophy case. So look for award opportunities and apply for them and seek to win one each year. And we've also highlighted the work that they do via articles and case studies. This one is about their MATLAB initiative and its success. So let's go back to this earlier slide. Do you think the Kenton County group is successful? Well, they sure are because they're delivering value and they're getting recognized for that value. So do you think when it comes to budgeting time that those people that are in charge of the resources are asking Trisha this question, what have you done for me lately? They really aren't because every day via multiple methods and initiatives, she's providing their value to the organization and community. Now here's an important point to make though, even though you would think that everyone understands the value Link GIS brings to their organization and that they can relax, that's not the case. They've recently had a turnover in executive leadership and this has triggered another call for Trisha to defend her group, her program and her budget. So she's gotten even more innovative in proving their work. She's now reviewing legislation to tie their work to these regulatory requirements. So here's an example of that work. Now I know it's hard to read, but this is Trisha's report. She's aligned their services with specific pieces of legislation and then shown what year they began providing the service, the primary benefactors of that service, and the source of funding. Additionally, they're looking at the monetary value of the data they provide to other agencies as another way to prove their value. So she's showing that what they're doing is required by law and people can track that back so that they can't be cut. Really good strategic uh, way to go about doing something. So now what can you do? Well, first of all, you can follow the great example from Kenton County. Create a strategy and a plan to convince the leaders in your organization to invest resources into you and your GIS program. Show them the business value that you're bringing and can bring to the table. And this means measuring your impact and communicating. So here's the agenda for the rest of this session. We're gonna go over measuring the benefits of GIS and calculation methods, examples of success, and then some conclusion and resources and call to action. So let's get started by talking about measuring the benefits of GIS. We all know that GIS provides benefits and their support, we should be expanding its use. So we need to keep in mind these, these benefits. We can achieve objectives, we can improve outcomes and customer service, we can avoid or reduce costs, we can increase efficiency and productivity, 
We can assure an increased revenue, protect staff and citizens, support regulatory response, and uh, enhance customer satisfaction and competitive advantage. So we need to keep these in the front of our mind and seek to do as many of these every day with every project we do. And here's another way to look at these. This is a, what we call a PRISM model of benefits. And this is from a 2009 user article. And look how it categorizes these benefits into four categories of finances, customers, processes, and outputs. I really like that. So let's talk about some calculation methods. Um, what is return on investment? If you look at the definition, it's a powerful tool for evaluating existing information systems and making informed decisions on software acquisitions and other projects. And if you're looking at the formula, you can look at percent of ROI is equal to the, bet, the benefits divided by the cost times 100. There are different ways to calculate ROI. Some people use the percentage method, others use a raw number like dollars or units of time saved. Uh, if you want more information about how to formally produce an ROI report, check out this book, The Business Benefits of, it, of GIS and ROI Approach. If you're looking for another good resource on how to calculate and document ROI, you should check out this video from Wade Kluse. He's the Director of Enterprise Systems at the Utah Department of Natural Resources, and he spent a lot of time working on GIS ROI, and he's authored several articles about it, and this video presents the method he uses to calculate and document the ROI that he generates. And in the video, he shares this spreadsheet he's created that can help you calculate and document your GIS ROI. Here's some other examples of how you can calculate it. This is an ArcGIS usage dashboard from the University of Michigan. It allows them to track the number and growth of registered users, the unique logins over time, and visualize users by college, school, and degree program. They recently published a blog post on this in GeoNet and shared how they did it. Uh, this is from Johnson City, Tennessee. They have a dashboard that tracks their data maintenance in their enterprise geo database. It shows the total number of records, feature classes, features, and editing activity over time. It also helps with data quality. And this can be helpful for showing the level of effort required for data maintenance. Uh, this dashboard is from Annie Anand, the Enterprise GIS Manager for Dallas, Texas. She uses it to analyze her staff's time so she can see what type of work they're doing and for whom. And it shows their work backlog, percentage of time spent working for each department, GIS usage by department, and what kind of work they're doing. Like, is it data management? Is it mapping and visualization? Is it analytics? What is it? And this provides great insight that allows them to proactively adjust their workload and identify opportunities for more of a certain type of work or where they might need additional staff or training. Now, if you're looking at KPIs, I wanna go through real quickly a list of KPIs that Kent County uses. So they look at the number of data and map requests they get. They look at the average minutes spent on their website, the number of hits on their website, the revenue from their data and map sales, the linear feet of maps they actually print out and produce, and the amount of data that they provide to customers. And they track this in a, in a monthly dashboard that's available online to the public. So let's look at some other examples here of, of success. Let's talk about during COVID-19. You know, it's been a massive disruption to almost every organization. It's clearly a priority. Some really great examples. Uh, first of all, everybody's probably seen the Johns Hopkins dashboard. And it was created by a PhD student in about eight hours. It um, actually gets over a billion hits per day, almost 14,000 per second. Uh, they also have a US version of that that does a deep dive into that. What's really interesting to think about this is, you know, it's hard to calculate the ROI of these dashboards. Are they saving time and money? Well, probably, but the important thing is the value you produce doesn't necessarily have to be time saved or money saved. These are actually pro providing lots of value, but it's hard to calculate. So as long as you're providing you know, value that can be recognized, that's all you need to worry about. And they're getting some high level users to this. This is a tweet from the acting deputy secretary of the Homeland Security Department that the, the, their app was, went down for a little bit and he, he was frustrated because he was using it. And here's a, a picture of Vice President Pence in front of it when he visited the, uh, the National U.S. Coronavirus Operations Center. Uh, the World Health Organization has deployed one. The Census Bureau has deployed one. Then we got a bunch here in, in North Carolina that I'd like to call out, Asheville, Cumberland County, Durham, Greenville, uh, Moore County, Union County, and Wilson County. So uh, this is all good stuff. And um, What's really interesting is to look at what's common in, about these applications. They're configurable, they're user-centric, they're data-driven, and they're simple. And those are four good things to seek to do with the applications that you roll out. If you do these things, 
they're, they're likely to have more success, more success and provide more value. I'd like to show some other examples from Tallahassee Leon County, Florida GIS. Um, this is a story map that their leader used, this one's back from 2016, to present to his annual presentation to his uh, executive staff. Now, every GIS manager should be presenting at least once a year on uh, your accomplishments for the year and let them know about it and then talk about the plan of what you're going to do next year. Uh, in their presentation, they calculated that by um, automating a bunch of, of routines with Python, they were able to save enough time that's equivalent to two and a half full-time employees. That's another great way to show ROI is to calculate it based on uh, full-time employees. And I know a lot of you have these routines. You should calculate the, the effort of those. Uh, they integrated with CityWorks. Uh, anytime you integrate, that's their enterprise asset management system. Anytime you integrate your enterprise GIS with other enterprise systems, you're going to deliver a lot of value. Uh, they did some stormwater modeling that really delivered a lot of value, allowed them to make quick, quicker, better decisions. It helped reduce flooding in the, in the community. Really valuable uh, thing as well. Let's talk about or show some, some more um, examples from Kenton County. Um, they generate revenue through map sales. And so for the last year, that business brought in over $260,000. Really nice number if, if you do uh, sell any of your products. Uh, they also uh, increased efficiency and provided some new services by working with their right-of-way management system that allowed them to coordinate all of their right-of-way management. And it, they calculated the ROI for that. And in the first eight years of that, um, using that application, they saved over $270,000. I talked about them looking at the value of their data. They maintain data for agencies they partner with, and they sometimes have to provide that data to entities on behalf of those partners at no charge. They want to track the value of that. So since July of 17, they've created a value of $285,000 there. Um, in 2017, they started up a drone program, and this program was successful from day one. They didn't even really have to market it very much internally. Uh, and in the first two years of the program, They've completed 45 different projects in these different areas. They've flown 203 flights, uh, 189 flight miles, and 32 hours of flight time. And during this time, since they've had it in 2017, since till last year, they've calculated an ROI of over $50,000. So one after another of great examples, they're calculating the ROI, they're publicizing it on their blog and elsewhere, and they're letting people know that when they invest a dollar in GIS, they're getting over a dollar back. Okay, so let's wrap this up and go over some resources and call to action. All right, the bottom line is you've got to measure your impact and broadcast it by any available channel. So follow this example from Kenton County, Kentucky, and others that we've shown. Um, this needs to be part of your regular routine. You need to communicate in clear language. You need to tell a story. You need to present the problem or the challenge, talk about how it was solved and explain the benefits. Remember that it's not about the technology, it's about the impact that technology delivers and building an image and reputation for providing business value. So think about those metrics, those KPIs, think about branding, marketing yourself and your department and your successes, using any kind of communications you can, multimedia, print, media, video, social media, providing presentations, uh, apply for awards, get certifications, and again, participate and support the community. Some more resources for you here. This is a really good report that came out of the Harvard Kennedy School uh, Ash Center for Democratic and Governance and Innovation. And it's about why every government executive should care about data. It has an in-depth analysis with examples of the generation of public value through analytics. And it includes a framework that uses three categories of value financial, operational, and public trust in government. This came out at the end of last year. So definitely go here and read this document and use it to help people understand the value you're bringing. Also remember about the book, if you want detailed information on a comprehensive methodology to build a business case for your GIS, check out this book, um, on Business Benefits of GIS. Also check out that video that I mentioned earlier from Wade Kluse on his GIS ROI documentation method. And in there, he's gonna have a link where you can download his spreadsheet and use it to calculate your ROI. 
Uh, I've also developed an, a GIS ROI story map. It contains a whole catalog of examples as well as a lot of other information. And it's all available in this single web app. So if you go here, you're gonna have lots of different resources to scroll through and utilize to help you um, understand how you can apply uh, this to your organization. And then let us, let Esri help tell your story. You're probably familiar with our publications like ARC News, ARC User, and ARC Watch. We also have numerous newsletters, case studies, podcasts, et cetera. So if you'd like to submit an article, you can do so via this website and please help us. We're always looking for new stories to tell. So please help us find them and let us uh, get you some notoriety. Okay, so time for your call to action. Uh, please take the information and strategies I've shown today to measure and communicate your value to the organization and community. This great quote from my colleague, Bill Meehan, does a great job at inspiring us about the potential and purpose of GIS. Enterprise GIS can transform the business by lowering costs and hassles greatly improving decision-making and communicating to executives in ways they've never seen before. So if we print this out and put it on our wall and remember this every day and seek to do it, people are going to see that value. They're going to understand that value and they're going to reinvest in you and your group. So thanks very much. I apologize for the audio problems at the beginning. I don't know how that happened because I wasn't muted at first and I don't think I did it, but uh, here's my contact information, email. You can find me on GeoNet, very active on Twitter and LinkedIn. Please connect with me. I love to work with customers and help them be successful. And then I want to hear your stories back so that I can share them with others. Um, that's all I have. And we guess we can open it up for questions. Yes, thank you, Adam. That was a great presentation. Uh, there was one general question regarding the slides. Uh, they are checking currently to see where those slides will be available, but the presentation will be available on the conference website after the event. Yeah, and if you want a, you know, a PDF version of these, please go ahead, just go ahead and email me at acarnow at esri.com. It's right there on screen now. And I'm happy to email you a PDF version and it'll be hyperlinked. So anytime I show it a website or something, it'll be hyperlinked. You can click on it and go right to that article or, or resource. That's wonderful. Anything else? Anyone else have any questions? I see they put a poll up. Hopefully people learned something. Oh, great. Look at that. Cool. Looks like we're pretty successful. You did a great job. Thank you very much, Adam. Does anyone else have any final questions for Adam? Hey, this is Garrett. I don't have a uh, question per se, but just a, a general statement uh, for everybody listening to this session. Adam, absolutely fantastic presentation. Uh, thank thank you, you very much for, for that, the words of encouragement. I, the biggest thing I think everybody just needs to take away from this is it, sometimes GIS folks within their organizations or, or within their companies, we tend to feel like we get overlooked a lot with the, the flashier engineers or the more public facing people. But it's definitely important to remember that every single one of you have value, uh, immense value within your organizations. Uh, and it really is up to us uh, as GIS professionals to take our own fate in our own hands and, and really get out there and show the world what you can do. Uh, you know, Hope used to say to everybody uh, within the organization that everyone does something interesting. You know, your job is interesting. It might not seem like it, but it's interesting to someone or else the job wouldn't exist. Uh, so just take those words and, and go from here with that. And like I said, I left it in the comments too. This stuff doesn't get you fired up to do your jobs. Uh, I really don't know what does because this is, <laughs> this is fantastic. Well, well stated, Garrett. I appreciate your comments. And yeah, I find the GIS people are really too modest. I mean, we, you got to get out there and toot your own horn. Nobody else is going to do it. And I know all of you are providing huge value every day. You need to let everybody know about it. Yes, it looks like there is one final question. Are there some classes such as web-based classes that could help educate our organizational leaders? such as department heads about what GIS can do and the value of it. Yeah, so we do actually do have some, I know through the Esri training um, library, we do have some uh, 
more seminar type of training classes that are designed for executives to get them to understand the value of GIS. So definitely reach out to your Esri account team. We can connect you with our training consultant and they can re recommend the exact ones that, that are there. In addition, um, I'm, I'm also uh, quite often pr present to executives to get them to understand the value of GIS. And I'd be happy to work with whatever um, customers need assistance with that as well. And then we do also, Esri does occasionally put on events for executives. So be mindful of those and just to connect with your account team. Wonderful. Thanks so much. And thank you, Garrett. Very well said. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks very much.